Hello and welcome to our latest Canary coaching session. Today we will examine the new data entry and bar chart controls in Axiom. My name is Kyle Kensinger. I'm a solutions consultant with Canary and I will lead you through the training today. Standing by live in the chat, we have Sean Ebersole and Don Mast. They are both senior solution consultants with Canary and they're ready to address any of your questions that might pop up along the way. So feel free to use the Zoom features and ask any questions you might have. Now our goal is to get you up to speed on these two new controls in less than 30 minutes. So let's kick things off. So starting with the data entry control, this is a much anticipated addition and it was released in version 21.3. It gives users the ability to manually upload data to the historian. And this could mean writing new data, overwriting pre-existing data, as long as the timestamps line up exactly, or inserting historical data into the historian. And from a security standpoint, you can rest assured because any values written to the historian using the data entry control are accompanied with audit information, including the user who committed the entry, as well as the date and time when it was committed. Now, from an admin perspective, there's a few things you need to configure. So to write changes through the local sender, you're going to want to make sure that the net.tcp windows endpoint is enabled. And you can do this by going into the sender tile within the admin, going to the configuration tab, and down to endpoints. Shifting over to the access submenu, any users or user groups who will be making value changes in the historian would need to be added to the allow list. So now that we've covered the configurations and permissions, let's slide over to my Canary admin and we can see it in action. So here's my Canary admin. As you can see, I'm running version 21.3. If any of my individual components had a different version installed, that would show up in red next to the version info. We wanna to go to the sender tile, down to configuration, endpoints, and here is the port that must be enabled for the manual data entry. On the access side, this is where we can edit the user groups and use Active Directory to allow people to make these changes. All right, now let's hop over to Axiom. As you can see, I am logged in as an admin and the star next to my username in the upper right-hand corner will indicate that I am an admin user. This is just a blank application that I've started. Under controls, we have the data entry control. Select it and drag it onto our screen. It's first going to prompt me to choose what tags I wanna add. We're just gonna use some simulation data today and look at total volume yesterday tags. After I add those, I have the opportunity to reorder the tags here. The trash can icon allows me to remove the tag from my list. Or if I decide I want to add additional tags, I can use the plus button and add another tag to that list. Once you're satisfied, you can close out of that. We have the ability to edit the size of this control. And if we Go to our properties. There's a couple of fields I want to talk about. The destination tells me where I'm sending the values. And right now it's going to my local host. Now I could add another machine or multiple historians by separating them with a comma and typing in the name of the other historian. Uh, a couple of basic things. We have our width 
and our XY, that's just showing where it's located within my application. Next to tags, we have edit tags. That brings up the same window that we had as soon as we added the tags to our list initially. Okay, now we could uh, select it not to be visible. In most instances, of course, you would want that visible on your application. But the next property is gonna be the stage time. So this ties into the entry time that you see on the control. And it could be a relative timestamp or an actual timestamp. So a relative uh, date and time would be something like normalizing to the beginning of the day by typing in day, and that would set it to midnight. Uh, you could do it to the top of the hour by typing in hour and then uh, maybe plus 30 M for 30 minutes. Um, we can also use, if we go back into edit mode, the calendar. And this allows us to choose an exact date and time from the calendar. We can look back in time with the date time picker. And then we can select an actual hour, minute, and second, and AM and PM. We shift back over to edit mode. Go back to our properties. The next. Uh, property I want to discuss is the is stage time read only. So if I enable that box, then the entry field you'll see becomes grayed out. So if I were to save this application and make it available to other users, they would not have the ability to edit the date time picker and change the entry time. So for this example, we're going to leave it unchecked so we can make those changes. Now you can use this feature in a variety of ways. So if you imagine if you're in a production environment, you could log maybe what your estimated production number uh, was and then versus what the actual total production was or something. Uh, for the example we're gonna use here, we're looking at total volume. So maybe we wanna choose now for our time and let's just keep it simple. Uh, maybe we'll make it 10,000 for this one pump. We commit, takes just a moment, and it updates to 10,000, as well as enters the timestamp. And you can do it for any number of, of tags here. So 500, and let's say 9,000, just to keep it simple. And now you see that we're committing two different value changes. And those properties are updated. So that's kind of the, the data entry tool. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is only admin users can create applications with the data entry tool. And once it's created, as long as the user has access to that application, they could open it, but they would not necessarily have the option to edit the tags. So for a non-admin user, again, if you don't have the star next to your login name, uh, it can be consumed in a read-only format and you can commit new value changes but not edit that tag list that you see here. All right, so now let's hop over to the bar chart. And again, the first thing it's gonna ask you for is what tags do you wanna add? So uh, let's look at some temperature tags here. Sure, three tags, sounds great. Okay, now again, we've added. So we have the, the same ability that we did from the data entry. We can either trash those uh, tags we selected or add new tags. Once we're satisfied, we can close out. And we can change the size of our bar chart. Now by default, what we're looking at here is a one hour time period in 15 minute uh, intervals. So a lot of the properties are the same. Again, you have the height, the width, the X, Y, that just uh, correlates to where it is within your application. We change the aggregate interval. Uh, first, let's shift back and look at maybe eight hours. Wow, that's a lot on the bar chart. 
So now we're looking at eight hours in 15 minute chunks. So that may be too much to visually see with on, uh, within the screen. Let's order this to 30 minutes. Yeah, that still might be too much. How about one hour? That's better. So now we're looking at the past eight hours in 60 minute intervals, what the temperature is for these tags. If we hop out of edit mode and go into live mode and hover over one of the bar charts, we see here what the tag is sourced to, the time, uh, the aggregate duration, as well as the value. Going back into edit mode, maybe we don't want to see the time average too. So here we could change the aggregate picker, and we have a number of options to choose from. Uh, maybe we want to see the difference in range, what would show uh, over the, that interval. Go out of edit mode. And now we're looking at the past eight hours, what the range is for those temperatures. Now we also have the ability to change our start time. So the way we're currently set with the duration is looking over the past eight hours. If we wanna see maybe from midnight forward, we can type in day. And if we see the time down here, it's now shifted to midnight. So there are a number of options uh, for how you can use the bar chart within your applications. In many instances, it would be used in conjunction with some other controls that you see here. Um, so I would encourage you to check out within the Canary community. Uh, we have the option to go to the Axiom Showcase and you can even submit your own dashboards and get feedback from members of the Canary community. Um, it really is that easy. You know, you can drag and drop. Uh, there are many use cases for the manual data entry. That's a feature, uh, make a great addition to the Canary lineup and I think will really enhance the applications that our end users build out. And the bar chart is another great feature. Uh, it's something that allows you to easily uh, see different values on your screen. And I think in conjunction with some other controls, you can really build out some very powerful dashboards. Um, so that covers the two new features. Um, we do have information on the Canary community, including a data entry control article that takes you step-by-step step through the data entry, as well as uh, has snippets of the messages you would receive, goes through the configurations and permissions again, and also provides some definitions of the properties that we discussed. So I hope this Canary coaching session was valuable for you today. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, do we have any questions you guys wanna cover? Well, hey, Kyle, this is Sean. Hey, Sean. That was a great uh, presentation. I just uh, looked like we had a couple questions here. Okay. Um, uh, Nick asks, uh, if uh, the edit tag feature gives you the ability to alter historical data, so I believe when you were in your properties for the bar chart control, the edit tag feature there allowed you to change the tags displayed on the actual bar chart. Mm -hmm. um, now, if we wanted to uh, actually edit, uh, maybe, you know, do a replace, like maybe we had a bad reading, someone input it incorrectly and you wanted to adjust that, that's where you'd use the data entry and you would um, edit the, you know, which tag you you wanted inside the data entry module and you need to pick the exact same date and time stamp as the original entry and then put in that new value. And then when you commit that, it will overwrite that original data point. And you'll have a message log in the historian uh, uh, message tile that you know, you'll be able to see that that was actually uh, edited. So it keeps a, a log of that information. Um, and then I think, uh, Ingo had asked about the Excel add-in. So the Excel add-in is basically read-only, like we're reading data out of the historian into Excel. We don't have a way to enter data into the Excel and commit that into the historian. So uh, that wouldn't be possible. We can only really do that with, you know, our data entry uh, feature that Kyle was showing. I think uh, Laura had a question as well. 
She asks, is, is it possible to create calculated tags in a bar chart as you would in a trend graph? So that's a great question. And that's something actually um, I could see as a nice enhancement. Currently, no, um, you know, the calculated tags are created inside our calc engine or within Axiom and the trending, as Laura suggested, you can create calculated trends. Uh, so far here though, we, we don't have that ability. But I, again, I think that's an excellent point. Uh, and I don't know, Kyle, if you wanted to show them where they can drop enhancement requests, that, that might be something good to show. Absolutely, so, uh, yeah. So there. if you go into the, uh, the community, uh, you can leave some feedback within our forum. And we do have uh, you know, Q&A and you can make some product feature requests. So that's something that we're always looking to, to add. Um, but I, I think that the, the bar chart you know, will really help from a visualiza visualization standpoint. Uh, but it's not meant to replace really the, the trend graphs. You know, that's still going to have a lot more functionality than the bar chart control. Um, so they're useful in, in separate ways. I don't see any other questions at this point. Uh, Sean, anything else you want to cover? No, I think we covered everything we needed to. But All right. as always, and I, see, I think Don just put our contact information there. They can reach out to us with questions, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we really appreciate everybody taking the time to learn more about these new Axiom controls. And again, I encourage you to uh, check out the Canary Road Show. If you can make it to Chicago, we would love to see you in person. These, uh, these events are, are always very popular and it's a great way to network with others in the community and within the industry 4.0 um, network. So we would encourage you to uh, attend if you can. If not, please interact with us on the Canary community and we hope to see you at another Canary coaching session. Thank you all and have a great day.